Welcome to Market Matters, our markets podcast on making sense, the hub for JP Morgan corporate and investment bank podcasts. In this episode of Market Matters, we'll hear from the market data and positioning intelligence teams within our data assets and alpha group. They'll be talking about key macro, micro, and political themes in the context of our high frequency trading data and proprietary signals from JP Morgan's markets business. Hi, I'm John Schlegel, and I'm back with my colleague, Andrew Tyler, as we look to shed some light on the macro environment and how investors are positioned. It hasn't even been two months since our last podcast together, but it seems that quite a bit has changed, so let's get right into it. Drew, it's always great to get your views on the macro environment, and this past month has seen some large moves within treasuries and the dollar. Additionally, we're starting to see equity markets slide a bit after a strong start to the year. Can you give us an update on what happened and the outlook from here? John, great to see you, and thank you for the question. So coming into the month, Fed expectations, which are proxied by the terminal rate, were for rates to reach 4.89%. As of Feb 24th, those expectations had increased to 5.36%, an increase of approximately 47 basis points. Stated differently, the bond market priced in two additional 25 basis point rate hikes. The drivers of this change were first, a stronger-than-expected non-farm payroll sprint showing 517,000 jobs have been added versus expectations of only about 200,000 ads. And the second driver was the CPI release, which showed headline inflation only fell 10 basis points from 6.5% to 6.4% relative to expectations for a 30% decline in headline inflation. The worry for investors is that inflation is stickier than expected. Combined, this has seen the 10-year yield move from 3.42% to 3.94%. The DXY index is appreciated 3.1%, and the S&P 500 is now down 2.6% month-to-date. Going forward, the expectation is that non-farm payrolls will move to between 150,000 and 200,000 ads, and for CPI to fall under 6% in the next print. As a reminder, the Fed is looking for non-farm payrolls to be 100,000 or less, and that represents a level that would not push wage growth higher. The pace matters, and a gradual decline is likely to increase bond yields, strengthen the dollar, and hurt equities. The view from our chief markets strategist, Marco Kalanovich, is that the Fed will induce markets to sell off, retesting 2022 lows of approximately 35.77 and the S&P 500 before we see the Fed pivot to cutting rates, which is supportive of equities. Marco and Dubrovko Lakos Buhas, our chief global equity strategist, have a 2023 year-end S&P 500 target of 4,200. Currently, with the S&P sitting around 4,000, there's a lack of consensus as to what to do for equity investors. So, John, from a position perspective, what have you seen this month, and is current positioning supportive of a directional view? This month has been quite interesting because there have been multiple signs that directional positioning was peaking in the early part of February, which has made us cautious for the past few weeks. Just to take a step back, when we spoke in early Jan on this podcast, I noted that positioning was quite negative or low across most investors. That negative tilt swung quickly towards neutral by about mid-Feb as CTAs bought U.S. equities, hedge funds covered shorts, especially at the end of January and the very start of February, while retail exuberance picked up around mid-month as crypto prices jumped and retail bought a lot of call options. However, the pendulum appears to be swinging back a bit more negatively in the past week or so as hedge funds add back to shorts, retail buying cools off, and CTA positioning in equities rolls over a bit. Overall, given we're only a few percent off the recent S&P highs and what appears to be a lack of fear in the flows we see, our view is still cautious in equities. I also think it's worth touching on what's happening outside of broader equity positioning. In short, there are other flows and rotations taking place that suggest recent equity strength at an index level in the U.S. and Europe is a bit of an outlier. By this, I'm referring to the very extreme outflows from U.S. high-yield credit ETFs and relative underperformance of high-yield credit versus equities over the past few weeks on a beta-adjusted basis. In addition, the disconnect between rates moving higher and equities not really selling off much has been a conundrum for many, but it appears to be resolving itself with equities falling as rates have yet to cool off. Furthermore, there are signs that European equities could come under more pressure soon as the underperformance of cyclicals versus defenses tends to precede broader weakness in the region, while European rates could be in the midst of breaking out to new multi-year highs. John, that's really interesting. But what about the team's quant signals? Do they suggest a directional view at the moment? I know Eloise and Edwina discussed the signal from the noise cool quit back in their recording on the short squeeze in early February. At that time, they said the main takeaway is that no region is looking outright bullish right now. Broadly speaking, the signals are in the same place today. Again, no region is screening outright bullish. 
Of course, these are very tactical signals with average holding periods of 5 to 10 trading days, so they could change and are worth watching. So between the quant signals and positioning, it just seems we're lacking strong reasons to be bullish and markets appear to be quite data dependent. Drew, passing it back to you, what is your tactical view? My view is tactically cautious. It feels like the no landing scenario has become the dominant market narrative. And this is a view which can be characterized as having positive GDP growth, stickier than expected inflation, and an elongated Fed hiking cycle. So under the scenario, you're likely to see bond yields rise amid further yield curve inversion. And this is a really challenging environment for equities, but the strength of nominal GDP growth buttresses revenue growth. From a factor perspective, you could see elements of value, defensives, and secular growth outperform irrespective of market direction. And at the sector level, things such as staples, energy, materials, and pharma could outperform. Investors will continue to wrestle with this rally, trying to understand if it is a bear market rally and thus should be faded, or if this is part of a new bull market. John, you have been through multiple cycles in your career. Can you give us some positioning keys that are associated with either a bear market or a bull market? I think this is pretty tricky given where things stand right now. Ultimately, given the mixed signals we see, I'm more focused on the tactical picture and fading extreme moves in either direction, as the lack of clarity could suggest that the market remains choppy and rangy. If I think about how investors are positioned and how they've been reacting since the late September lows, I'd suggest that hedge funds generally remain in the bear camp, while long onlys have been more willing to see through the potential for near-term chop and at least move back to neutral which may suggest they're more in the bull camp or at least of the view that the downside is somewhat limited. One thing I'm watching is how risky factors, such as high vol stocks, stocks with low profitability, and small caps perform from here. They've generally seen a rebound earlier this year, and if they continue to hold up well, it would suggest we might be more in a bull market for now. However, if they roll over again like they did multiple times in the 2000 to early 2003 period, then it would suggest we're not out of the woods of this bear market. Drew, at this point in the year, what has surprised you the most about market action? That is a great question. I would start with the strength of the consumer where expectations entering the year were for a rapid exhaustion of excess savings and then a consumer-led recession. That has set the stage for much of what we've discussed here today. And from a market perspective, the rapid unwind of 2022's winning trades. 70% of the NASDAQ 100 is positive on the year, with 41 companies experiencing double-digit gains on the year. Viewing our Delta One team's Bloomberg Launchpad, crypto is the best basket, up 61%. You're seeing strength in SPACs, high short interest names, momentum shorts, and cyclicals. In terms of those baskets, what have you seen from a positioning perspective? In general, we're seeing a lack of bullishness from hedge funds in those baskets and themes. There has been net buying in pockets of high short interest stocks, but it's been exclusively short covering, and the flows a couple weeks ago suggest there's still a strong desire to be short many of those stocks. Additionally, momentum has been sold in both the U.S. and Europe earlier this year, but we don't see funds buying the short momentum stocks. Finally, on cyclicals versus defensives, the overall flows have been quite mixed. Andrew, it's always great to catch up with you and compare our views. To summarize our key points, there appears to be a lack of consensus around what to do with equities, and both our views are tactically cautious given the mixed macro backdrop and more neutral positioning that might not be as clear a tailwind. The rapid unwind of last year's winning trades has been a big surprise at the start of the year, though it seems mostly due to the unwind of short positions. Thus, it's not clear that there's been a more positive underlying shift in market views, which makes it difficult to say whether we're in a new bull market or have only seen another bear market rally recently. We'll wrap it up there. Finally, we'd like to say thank you to our listeners for tuning into this podcast. If you're enjoying this conversation, you can subscribe to stay on top of the latest industry news and trends. Follow JP Morgan's Making Sense on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. The views expressed in this podcast may not necessarily reflect the views of JP Morgan Chase and Co. and its affiliates. Together, JP Morgan. They are not the product of JP Morgan's research department and do not constitute a recommendation, advice, or an offer or a solicitation to buy or sell any security or financial instrument.
This podcast is intended for institutional and professional investors only and is not intended for retail investor use. It is provided for information purposes only. Reference products and services in this podcast may not be suitable for you and may not be available in all jurisdictions. JP Morgan may make markets and trade as principal in securities and other asset classes and financial products that may have been discussed. For additional disclaimers and regulatory disclosures, please visit www.jpmorgan.com forward slash disclosures forward slash sales and trading disclaimer.